Today I'm going to share with you our work on the check-in side system where we build a fine-grained indoor location-based uh, social network. So as we know, current location-based social networks like Foursquare, uh, Google Plus with location sharing, and Facebook Places are designed to work anywhere, whether it's indoor or outdoors. And in order to estimate the user location, usually you use one of these uh, methods. So they use the GPS. However, GPS doesn't work indoors uh, due to the non-line of sites conditions, or they depend on the cellular-based localization, which gives the accuracy in the order of kilometers. And the best accuracy you can achieve is through uh, Wi-Fi, which based on our experiments, as I will show in the four-square case, the median error is 84 uh, meters in indoors. Clearly, this uh, accuracy is not accurate enough for indoor applications. However, as we know, as humans, we spend most of our time in all indoors. Some of the studies shows that 89% of our time is spent in indoor location, whether it's inside a campus, shopping malls, or airports. So in order to quantify or evaluate the current location-based social networks performance in indoor applications, we performed a study where we collected data from uh, more than 700 stores in four different malls. Uh, using 20 participants over a period of six weeks, and our main location-based uh, uh, social network was four square. And uh, our uh, goal from this study is to quantify the performance in terms of coverage and the quality. And by coverage, we mean what is the percentage of locations covered indoors by the four square. So let's see some of the results we got. First, we found that four square misses about 39% of the venues inside the four malls we collected data from. From these, about 35% are don't exist at all in the database of Foursquare. And from them, 4% was listed as different granularity. And by this, I mean that a restaurant, for example, uh, with a specific name is not listed by its name, but listed as a restaurant. So it's coarse grained uh, uh, information about the location. Another finding, interesting finding that uh, we got is that there is a redundancy in the database. So we found that about 8% of the locations are repeated, same location is repeated with a different name. And we believe the reason for that is that the chicken list returned to the user to select where uh, she is currently uh, standing uh, is not accurate enough, so the user has to scroll the list, and instead of scrolling, they just give up and enter the same location again with a slightly different name, and this causes the 8% redundancy. So this is in terms of coverage, in terms of quality, and by quality we mean how good we rank the uh, chicken list and how far uh, the current user location from the uh, top list in the location. This figure shows the uh, CDF of the rank of the venue in the return chicken list. The red curve is the CDF. And we can see that in uh, four square, 47% of the time, the actual location, uh, the place, the actual place the user is standing at is ranked more than 30. And this explains why we have duplicates, at least partially, why we have duplicates in the chicken uh, list. In addition, we found that 60% of the locations reported in the chicken list by four square are outdoor locations. Even though I'm standing inside the mall, this is when Wi-Fi is turned on. When Wi-Fi is turned off, the accuracy is even worse in the, in the location. So this 60% increases to 24% of outdoor locations returned when I am indoors. In terms of distance, so this CDF compares the uh, difference in distance between the location I'm currently standing at and the location of the top item on the list. We found that the median error in case of four square is 84 meters. So in summary, what we get out of this study is that we need a more accurate ranking algorithm for the chicken list for location-based sensor networks when uh, social networks when we are working uh, indoors. This will give a better user experience so that the user doesn't have to scroll in the list, and it will also reduce the duplicates entries in the database. In addition, since the coverage, as we show, that Foursquare misses about 39% of the indoor locations, it would be good if we can automatically increase the coverage of location-based social networks through uh, some uh, inference techniques, and this will also reduce the granularity mismatch. If I can detect the place automatically, I can reduce the granularity mismatch. So our solution to this problem is our check inside system. So what we do is that we try to identify the location using another idea other than the location. And the basic idea is that we will leverage the cell phones as ubiquitous sensors. We use the sensors of the collected data from the sensors available on the cell phone in a crowdsourcing approach to have a fingerprint for the location. And the basic idea is that different locations have unique signature on the sound, 
and images and inertial sensors, as we'll show in the details of the presentation. We combine this with information extracted from social networks to obtain a semantic uh, fingerprint for that location. And hopefully by this semantic fingerprint of the location, we can get uh, a better or more accurate ranking of the uh, venues in the chicken uh, list. In addition, since the user chooses where she is currently standing, we use this implicit feedback to enhance the uh, performance of our system. And as a side product, we can automatically detect the uh, and the label the different venues on a floor plan without getting any uh, explicit information from the user. As nice as it may sound, there are a number of challenges that need to be met in order to address, uh, to uh, realize this system. First, as we know, indoor localization is inaccurate. The accuracy is in order of a few meters, which can place you on a different venue where you are currently standing. And this will reduce the accuracy of the system. So we need to handle the inaccuracy on the indoor localization uh, technique that we are using. Another challenge is that current location-based social networks give incentives for users to fake their chicken location. So for example, in Foursquare, you have this mayorship uh, paradigm. In other uh, social networks, you can give coupons to the user based on where she's checking in. So this gives incentives to, for the users to check in at uh, different locations or give an erroneous chicken. So our system needs to handle this erroneous chicken as part of its uh, operation. So in the rest of my talk, I'll give the details of the chicken side uh, system operations, and then show you some performance evaluation results, and finally conclude and give directions for future work. So chicken site uh, consists of two main components. The chicken site client that runs on the user phone and collects the data and ships them to the chicken site server that is, contains the core components of the system and uh, performs the different system functionality. So let's start by the chicken side uh, client. Whenever we are collecting data from the user, of course, privacy is a main concern. So we have this privacy controller module where the user can determine the mode of operation. Of course, there is a trade-off between system performance and user privacy. So what we do is that we allow the user to, cho to choose different modes of operation. In the full uh, um, uh, operation uh, mode, we collect all sensors if the user wants to do that. However, we have a privacy-sensitive privacy mode of operation where the user can elect to turn off the mic or the cameras to obtain for, uh, better privacy. I would like to note here that some studies show that even people uh, talk about privacy, 78% of the time the camera and the mic are turned on for the phones of the users. You can find the references in our UBCOM paper on our website. In addition, you can also perform local processing on the phone or on the nearby user laptop. So you extract the features from the sensors and send the features rather than the actual images or video so that you can further enhance the user privacy. So once the user selects its uh, her privacy uh, mode, we start to collecting different sensors uh, from the phone, and mainly we collect most of the available information, inertial sensors, uh, where we use for localization and for um, uh, mobility mode detection, uh, camera, microphone, and so on. Again, there is also a an energy uh, consumption concern. We don't want to leave the phone sensors running all the time or will drain the battery quickly. So what we do is that we have this module, the fixed venue determination uh, module, and the goal of this module is to tell us that the user is in the same venue uh, is, uh, or it has moved to another venue and during the transition uh, period, the sensors are turned off. And the way we do this, we combine the initial sensors with Wi-Fi similarity threshold. And if you know that the user is currently standing in the same venue, we start collecting the sensor information to prepare them for sending it to uh, the chicken side server. So the user now is in a specific venue and she wants to check in. She clicks that uh, she requesting the chicken list. So what we do is that we ship the sensor information through the communication manager to the chicken side server. The first thing we do is that we construct a system uh, venue fingerprint. And this is a fingerprint based on the different sensors available collected from the user to try to identify where the user is standing in. Not based on the location, but based on the semantic fingerprint of the uh, sensor information. Once we do this in the yellow uh, module, the blue modules try to compare this fingerprint with the fingerprint of the venues stored in our database. And this information is collected through the data we, uh, we get from the user, as well as from the sensors, uh, the information we get from the current location-based social networks. Once we do this, uh, obtain this more accurate 
checking list through our technique. We send it back to the user, and the user hopefully will find it in the top uh, ranked locations that, as we will quantify in the evaluation results. It does a checking operation by selecting which venue she is currently wants to check in uh, to. This information is sent back to the system and through the user feedback module, this is considered as a ground truth. We can enhance the internal operation of our system, as well as we can also uh, get a semantic floor plan automatically. So I have a floor plan. The user is telling me I am, for example, in Starbucks. I can put the label of Starbucks on the uh, map. However, of course, there are some challenges that I will talk about when I talk about the details. So what I will do now is talk about how we get the different fingerprints from the different sensors and how we do the ranking and uh, operation and rank ag aggregation. And finally, talk about the semantic floor plan uh, labeling. Let's start. So we, we get our fingerprint from these different kinds of sensors. We have location, fingerprint, Wi-Fi, image, sound, color, and lights, and the mobility data. Let's take each one of them uh, one by one. So in our location determination technique, we use our unlock uh, system. I believe I presented uh, details about the unlock system in my Google talk last year. So if you want more information, you can find it in our papers or in the Google Tech Talk. So the basic idea is that uh, Unlock uses a dead reckoning approach using the inertial sensors. I did recon the user location to obtain where the user is standing. However, as we know, the reckoning uh, error increases quickly with time. So to reset this error, we leverage what we call anchor points. These anchors can be physical, like elevators, stairs, and so on. So if I know that the user is currently in the elevator using the phone sensors, I can reset the user location to the location of the elevator. Or they can be virtual anchors. And these virtual anchors are unique points in the environment that don't have physical meaning. Again, if I meet one of these virtual anchors, learn it through unsupervised learning techniques, I can correct my dead reckoning uh, error and unlock give us an error in the terms of a few meters. So this is our uh, location uh, determination for indoor technology based on our unlock system. For Wi-Fi, one challenge that we need to handle is the heterogeneity of the phones. Different phones measure the signal strength uh, differently. So instead of depending on RSI, we depend on the fraction of time each MAC address or access point is here within a fixed window in time. And this is our Wi-Fi fingerprint, and this feature is more robust to heterogeneity of devices. The image, the idea here is that different uh, shops or venues will uh, hopefully have different images taken by the users, and this can be used to differentiate between different uh, venues. And we use the standard uh, computer vision features like SIFT uh, features. However, these features are uh, computationally intensive and require a lot of uh, memory. So what we use is we cluster these features and obtain, this is a classical computer vision also term, which is this term. It's a visual uh, term. And we store these visual terms as representing the M different images we collected either from the uh, four square or from the user through the chicken operation. Similarly, for the sound, we collect sound information. And our feature for the sound is the histogram of the amplitude. And the intuition here is that such shops, like if you are in a library, for example, the fingerprint, sound fingerprint, would be different from if you are in a music store, at least in terms of background noise and the sound level uh, in the different uh, venues. Again, for the color light, you can use it for differentiation. If you think about it, Starbucks, for example, have a green theme. So based on this, we can try to extract the dominant theme of different venues. And to do that, we uh, convert the images from the RGB dom domain to the HSL domain, which is more robust in extracting the dominant uh, light. And then we we'll perform clustering over the different colors. And our feature is the centroid of the different locations and the, uh, the cluster size. Finally, we use mobility data also as a feature that differentiate the different venues. And we have three different mobility uh, features. User activity, which means is the user active or not. For example, if I am in a uh, clothing store, I am browsing more frequently than if I'm staying in a restaurant. So what we use is that we divide the user mobility time by the stationary time. And based on the threshold, we determine whether the user is stationary browsing or walking. Similarly, the visiting time can differentiate uh, different uh, shops. For example, you visit a restaurant most probably in the morning or in, during lunchtime or during dinner time. This is different from visiting other kinds of shops. And finally, the stay duration. You stay in a restaurant uh, more time than you stay in a coffee shop, for example. So based on these features, we extract uh, some information and we use this to quantify the different venues. 
Once this is done, the yellow uh, fingerprint is the fingerprint of where the user is currently standing. So what we do in the next module, the venue ranker, is we compare this fingerprint to the fingerprints of the different venues already stored in our database. And we do this through three steps. First is filtering. By this, we just uh, filter out venues that are far away from the current user uh, location. It's based on location and Wi-Fi. Then ranking for each kind of sensor, we uh, generate a ranked list of the uh, candidate venues the user may be in. And finally, the rank aggregation module combine these different ranks in one fixed, fixed rank. We have done this uh, much earlier. So uh, let's start quickly taking each one of them one by one. So filtering returns a, a, a fixed number of venues where the user can be located at. By default, we take 10 as the number of uh, venues we return. And we do filtering by location Wi-Fi. By location, it's simply based on the distance. So we compare the estimated location of the user to the center of mass of the venues on the map. And we use the walking distance rather than the Euclidean distance for better estimate of the distance between the user and the venue. For Wi-Fi, we use a standard uh, Wi-Fi similarity threshold, and we rank the uh, different venues based on Wi-Fi similarity with the current Wi-Fi fingerprint of the user, and we just choose the top 10 locations to uh, return as the filtered, unfiltered location. For ranking, each type of sensors provide us a ranked list of the candidate user venues. So for example, using the sound, as we said, our sound feature is the histogram of the amplitude. So what we do is that we get the Euclidean distance between the histogram of the current user location and the histogram stored for the venue. And we take this as the similarity measure between the venue and uh, user current location. For the image uh, features, we said we have this, these terms. These terms are, can be treated as terms inside a document where the document is the image, and the this term is the visual term inside this image. And if you do this, you can use the standard inverse document frequency uh, technique to get the most probable uh, venues the user can be standing at. Similarly, for the popularity ranking and the other kinds of sensors, I will not go, uh, go uh, into the details. You can look them up in the paper for the sake of time. Once ranking is done, so for each type of sensors, we have a ranked list of candidate location. We need to aggregate them to obtain the final single ranked list that will be returned to the user. Of course, we can either base the uh, uh, aggregation on the scores of the different lists or based on the order within the list, ignoring the scores. And through our system, we found that the order is more robust, and we believe that this is because uh, of the high variance between the different ranks, rankers in terms of score. So what we do is that we use just the order, and we sum the order across the different rankers. And based on this sum, we determine the final order of the list to be returned to the user. So once this single ranked list is obtained, we send it back to the user. And hopefully this is accurate. The, uh, the location or the venue the user is currently located will be at the top location. The user selects which venue she wants to check in, and this is sent back to the user feedback module and to the semantic floor plan estimation module. So the user feedback module takes this implicit feedback of the user of where she is currently standing and ranks the different rankers. So the rankers that rank this ground truth higher will get a higher weight. So by this, we enhance the uh, system operation over time by giving different rankers different weights based on the implicit feedback we get from the user. Finally, and Interestingly, what we can do also is to associate a label. So currently, the user is saying, I'm at Starbucks, and I have an estimate of the user indoor location. I can associate this Starbucks label to where Starbucks is located on the map. Of course, there are issues, as we mentioned before, of inaccurate indoor localization. There are inherent error in indoor localization. And also, there are fake chickens. The user can perform an erroneous chicken to gain some benefits. So what we do for this is we uh, use unsupervised outlier detection technique, and basically we are doing hierarchical clustering. So for all chickens within Starbucks, what we do is to cl we cluster these chickens using hierarchical clustering uh, techniques. And one of the uh, main things we need to do is to determine at what level we need to cut our hierarchical clustering to determine the clusters, and we do this using Bayesian uh, decision uh, estimation. So after this operation, we have different clusters, and we need to choose which cluster represents the correct chicken within the venue. One can say that we can do majority voting. However, when we are bootstrapping our system, we don't have enough chickens to determine which 
cluster based on uh, majority votes. So instead, we use another heuristic, which is the correct cluster is the one that is most similar to nearby venues. So usually, uh, venues are clusters similarly. Uh, and this gives us the main cluster, which is the cluster that minimizes the difference between itself and nearby uh, clusters. So after this step, we have a cluster of chicken locations that is the most probable cluster. We need to obtain the actual venue on the list. And this is estimated at the venue that encloses the center of mass of chickens within this particular uh, cluster. More details can be found on the, uh, in the paper about the mathematical formulation. So this uh, concludes the details of the system. So how well uh, did we perform? We use the same data we collected from our uh, different malls. It's about 700 venues in four malls, two cities over six week duration using 20 participants. And this uh, table shows the data we found for these particular uh, four malls in four square. You can see that out of the 711 venues, we found only about 436 venues in the four square database and the rest are uh, uncovered. And of course, based on the type of venue, you have different coverage. So the most popular is food places. So it's more covered than other kinds of uh, venues. So what we'll show, we start by showing the performance of the different uh, system modules, then the performance of different modes of operation. And finally, we compare uh, the overall system performance with Foursquare. So let's start for filtering. As we said, we filter based on Wi-Fi and location information, and we can say that Check Inside can locate the actual user venue 100% of the time within uh, a list of 15. So if your output list is 15, I can correctly uh, identify the uh, location of the actual user venue 100% of the time. This is compared to only 29% for four square given the same list. So this is significant uh, enhancement just based on filtering without any ranking. So if I include ranking and I add this, this figure shows the performance of the different rankers in terms of ranking the actual uh, venue. We can see from this figure that Wi-Fi is the best ranker. It can give the best performance in ranking the venue followed by location. And the uh, least uh, performing in terms of ranking is the mobility data. And we believe the reason for this is that usually uh, in, in malls, similar venues are located in the same area. For example, you think about the food court, all food locations are inside the same location. So if you use mobility data, they are close together. People, uh, the person will perform similarly in all of them, and that leads to reducing the effect of the mobility ranker. However, we, based on our check inside system, we can rank the actual venue the user is standing at in the top five 99% of the time. This is again compared, as we showed to Foursquare, that 47% of the time, the actual using user venue is located more than 30 so again, this is significant enhancement. For the user feedback module, the figure on the left shows that starting from equal weights to the different rankers, over time, the user feedback module can stabilize to the actual uh, weight of the different modules. Using just as low as 30 chickens, I can reach the actual or the correct weight for the different modules. If I use this feedback in ranking the modules, the rank of the actual venue at the top of the list enhances from 70% to 83%. So check inside can rank the actual venue of the, of the uh, user at the top location of the list as number one, 83% of the time. This is uh, very promising uh, results. Finally, please. Yes, we collected in a crowdsourcing approach. In a crowdsourcing approach, yeah. Yes, using, so we have different kinds of rankers. Each ranker is based on one sensor. And the user feedback module, what it does is that it tells me which ranker should be trusted more than the other rankers. So uh, as I showed here, for example, Wi-Fi gives better performance compared to localization and then pulled by image. So what we saw in the uh, user feedback module is that this is the actual weight we get using the and you can see that it gives Wi-Fi better ranking than localization and so on. Based on the user feedback, since the user is telling me I am currently in Starbucks, the ranker that ranked Starbucks higher should get, give higher, higher weight. Is this globally? This is globally. Actually, one of the extensions we are working on now is to do it per user. 
So maybe different users have better uh, rankers in terms of, this is a very good point, exactly. Or per venue, it's per user or per venue, same thing. Very good uh, point, great. Finally, for the semantic uh, labeling, what we did here is that we induced artificial error in the chicken operation. All the chickens are performed by our 20 participants, and they were correct. So what we did is we induced erroneous chicken from 0% up to 100% chicken error. And we are comparing chicken side, which is the uh, green curve, to two extremes. One of them is no detection, if I don't do any outlier detection, which is the Berber curve. And the other is the orange curve, is the uh, uh, oracle, curve, the one that knows which chickens are correct and which chickens are incorrect in a global manner. And we can see that for different percentage of chicken errors, the chicken side can provide from 9 to 19% enhancements of the uh, semantic uh, detection of the floor uh, plan. I would like to note here that even if you don't have any chicken errors, you still have the 80% accuracy, and this is due to the inherent indoor localization error. This error is not because of the fake chickens, but it's due to the inherent inaccuracy in the location determination technology. So uh, in the next part, I will evaluate the different modes of operation. So the chicken side curve, the orange one, is the system with using all the sensors on the phone. The uh, green one is the privacy enhanced mode where we don't use any mic or image uh, data. And the Berber curve, if I, knew, I use just indoor localization, I don't use any other sensors. So this is the uh, simplest idea, just use a more accurate indoor localization technique to detect where the user is standing. And we can find that using the different sensors on the phone, check inside and provide uh, about 55% enhancement in the ranking of the actual or the top venue compared to the location only information. So just using location only, you are losing a lot of possibilities to enhance your uh, accuracy. Finally, when we compare uh, chicken side to four square in terms of accuracy and coverage, as we started in our study, this figure compares the uh, uh, orange curve to uh, four square in terms of ranking the actual venue, and we can see that uh, the median uh, rank in our system, we can rank the top venue in the system, which is at one, at 83% as we showed, while at four square it's less than about 5%. So the top, the venue the user is standing at is in the top list of four square only 5% of the time compared to 83% of the time in our case. The lower uh, figure shows the distance error. We showed before that the median distance error for four square is 84 meters. In our case, it's about five meters. This is a significant enhancement in the performance of location-based social networks. In terms of coverage, what we did is that we took the fingerprint of the moles constructed in one mole, and we tried to see if we can use this fingerprint to detect uh, venues or shops in another mole. So we use fingerprint from one mole and try to detect the uh, venues in another mole. And using this, of course, it, de it depends on the type of venue, but overall, we can increase the coverage or detect about 25% more venues, uh, more than the venues stored in the Foursquare database without any prior uh, calibration in the new mole based on the uh, fingerprints in the other modes. Sure. So all the fingerprints, which is, exactly. Wi-Fi, of course, it changes from one place and the location, of course, Wi-Fi and the location. So it's mainly uh, image, mic, color, and mobility data. Very good observation. Great, moving on. So in summary, I showed you the chicken side system that leveraged quite uh, crowdsourcing information to implement a fine-grained location-based social network. And the idea is to construct a semantic fingerprint on an automatic way for the different venues. And this semantic fingerprint helped us to more accurately rank the different uh, locations. We showed that we can achieve the uh, uh, accurate ranking within 95% 90, of the time within the top five locations and at the same time increase the coverage of indoor uh, location based social networks by 25% without any uh, in, uh, explicit uh, help from uh, the user. And as a, as a side uh, benefit, we could semantically label the uh, floor plan and obtain automatically semantic rich floor plans. Currently, we are expanding the system in different uh, directions, including better semantic floor plan labeling through better outlier detection uh, techniques. Also, uh, other semantic granularities. So if I have fingerprints for different restaurants, can I get a more or higher uh, level fingerprint that characterizes what are restaurants in general? 
and then I can use this to, to identify restaurants and other malls or other uh, venues. Another thing is to uh, have other applications. For example, instead of having a chicken list for users to choose from, I can, since I have accurate estimation of the user venue, I can perform the chicken through the map. So the user clicks on the map where she's standing. And finally, like any other uh, crowdsourcing approach, energy and privacy uh, has still a lot of enhancements that can be performed in this domain. This concludes my talk, and if you need more information about our papers, media coverage, incoming demo, and the possible commercialization, please go to our uh, website. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions, please? Can you just help me understand uh, how your current take-off of this? Was it just Android? Which city is it in? Because sometimes uh, databases vary, vary a lot in quality. So Foursquare in downtown Manhattan, awesome. Foursquare in very good question. So all of these data is collected in Egypt. It's for uh, malls, two in Alexandria, two in Cairo, which are the two biggest uh, cities in uh, Egypt. Participants mainly were students working with me with this project and their friends. So uh, CAT, we are trying it also in other uh, countries. So we are talking about be with people in the US and with people in the region like Saudi Arabia to start deploying this and collecting data to increase the size of the study. Robin. Yes. Exactly. Very good question. The question is, this is based on crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing information keeps changing with time. So Currently, which is based, of course, the results are based on the static data we collected. But the way we envision it is that we'll have a continuous stream of data that is coming, and maybe you are doing uh, windowing where you take, for example, the latest one month or two months uh, data to extract or update your fingerprints. So, but it's, it's yeah, so actually, it's. Uh, you can do all of this. You can have your fingerprint as a function of data. What we are doing currently is that for mobility data, for example, you have the histogram based on the time of day. So you can say that uh, this particular location, this is the histogram of visits. The sound is taken all over the uh, duration, maybe of the day. And maybe this is why, for example, some rankers perform worse. If I take this into account, the performance of the ranker can become better, for example. Of this, uh, this question. Well, it's no, it's great. Um, one question was: It seems that between Wi-Fi and rotation, if we go back to the performance graph, they accounted for most of the performance improvement. Right. Um, the other ones added incremental value, mainly helping the precision at two, like the second and third, but they didn't really help with one. Right. It's a lot of effort. Do you think it's it's worth the additional effort? Yes. Yeah, so the point Walid is raising is. Uh, most of the enhancement is coming from the uh, Wi-Fi and the localization. Wi-Fi and the localization modules, and the other is a slight enhancement on top of this. So what we can see from this is, yes, Wi-Fi maybe gives the best performance in, in ranking the first one. However, in ranking the second and third, the overall performance is significantly better if I include other sensors. So I think this is an, it's an application uh, designer uh, choice. Do you need really, one can say I can live with 83% performance in detecting the actual and I can get this. So using just Wi-Fi, I can get about 65. Do I need to go from 65 to 83? So with the other modules or not? So it depends on what you need to do. Actually, one of the feedback we got from the UBCOM attendees is that you are saying I can achieve this very high accuracy. Can I automatically check in the user? since I have this accuracy. So again, if you, are, you see I can live with 17% uh, error, that's fine. If my application is very sensitive, I don't want to do this, then I need to take the other sensors into account. Please. Does not go to? Yes. Yes, so this is the difference with the feedback module. So as we said, the feedback module increases it from 70 to 83 to 83%. Yeah. So this is without the feedback module. Please. Uh, 
Good question. I don't have it from the top of my time, but I think it wasn't uh, that much because in order to collect these 711 venues, they had to move quickly within the venue. So I imagine it will be in the order of a uh, few minutes, one or two minutes per uh, location to collect the Wi-Fi fingerprint and take the images. This is included all in the, this uh, few minutes environment here. Maybe you can find more details inside the paper in the, please. Yes. I think it's the way, for, so the question is, we mentioned that the median error in four square is 84 meters. So the question is, and this is the difference between the center of mass of where the user is actually standing and the center of mass is the top-ranked venue. So we believe this is related to how four square ranks its ranked list. And we believe that of course, we don't know information about how they actually do it, but mainly we found that it's based on popularity. So the most popular locations are based before the other locations. And if you do this, even though your accuracy of Wi-Fi may be about 20 or 30 meters, but you are, the, rank, the way you rank your list is incorrect, so that the actual rank is further away from the actual location. Some of it also is related to that, as we mentioned, 60% if you turn on Wi-Fi or 22% if you return on Wi-Fi, locations from outdoor are returned. And this can screw the tail of the distribution and make your uh, evaluation worse. We have a question here, the side. Yes, please. Uh, so actually we take, I don't have the number of my, of my head, but if you take one minute, what you do is you scan do continuous scans and then take the percentage, how many times you hear the particular access point within this one minute period. And you take this as your fingerprint. No signal strength, and the reason for that is the phone heterogeneity. Different phones can give us different RS fingerprints, and so it will not be robust. But however, this percentage of time I hear a specific access point should be independent of the phone hardware. So it's uh, how you compare two signal strengths. No, sorry, not signal, two fingerprints, two features. So if I am standing at one location, I'm currently hearing some set of access points. If I am collecting data in my venues, how to compare these two uh, venues? So you mean it's based on signal strengths? So it is just you base it on the, so you have this feature, which is the percentage of time. You take it as a number, and there is another number, and you, then you apply the similarity th method. Sure. Size of? Size meaning? It's a typical. Uh, so we have large, large, larger shops like Macy's and so on, and you have small shops. So it's varying from, of course, Wi-Fi. That's a very good question. Wi-Fi, of course, will vary, and that's why maybe in some cases Wi-Fi performs poorly than uh, localization. That's why you need other sensors. So in large shops like a big uh, department store, for example, the Wi-Fi being the brand, you can either uh, split it into smaller shops, but here we didn't do that. We just took the entire shops as a finger brand. This is what we are doing with this, but maybe as one extension, you can split it as other smaller uh, uh, venues. Please. Mm -hmm. uh, good question. If I understand the question correctly, you mean how many venues were in the four malls in total? Or So we say we have 711 over the entire full uh, malls. And out of these 711, there was about 436 already in the four square database. The remaining about 300 were not in the four square uh, database. And this is, yes, so this is uh, the filtering and ranking are performed over these 711s for different, of course, I am, if I am in a mall, I'm just working on this specific 
uh, mole data. So roughly you can divide by four to get the number of venues inside each mole. Of course, uh, that's why all the results are based on these specific four moles in this specific configuration. So we're trying to generalize from these particular moles. It would be interesting if you have more data to share it with us and we can work on it to see how it would perform in a larger scale. Yeah. That would be great. Uh, Robin? Right, so the question is, it's related to energy consumption concerns. How do you collect the data you ship to your server? Do you do it all the time? You are running the sensors running all the time. In this case, it would be very energy uh, hungry. Or you are doing it just when the user clicks a chicken. And for this, we use this fixed venue determination module. And the reason of this module is to tell us that the user is currently in one venue and he is stationary within this venue. So what happens is that once you detect the user is stationary within a venue using Wi-Fi similarity and the inertial sensors, you start collecting sensors in the background within a fixed window. So it's updated. So this balances these two extremes. You are not collecting data all the time. You are collecting only when you have a sense that you are stationary. And you are not collecting just when the user clicks because you need some history in order to do these scans and the previous uh, data. That's... Uh, Uh, as I said, this is currently how we do it as an initial, initial uh, uh, approach to this problem. However, I listed it in the future work because it's a very important and very uh, critical thing. How otherwise, people will not use your system. If you are collecting data all the time and the battery is being drained, uh, it will be useless. It will uninstall your application. Another question, please. Actually, just a quick follow-up. Yes. Yes. So do you actually, for that geographic area, do you know what the surface space of the floor square is? It's kind of retraining, right, the floor square algorithm. So I'm wondering, is it the same order of magnitude in places, or is it actually much higher? I think it was proportional to the same uh, amount of venues that were in the floor square database, if I understand your question okay. correctly. So it was so proportional. You around 400, 500 that floor square is considering to populate their list. Yes. So actually, yes, exactly. So and that's why actually we get I think this is all in the database. Uh, I'm not sure about this because we calculated coverage. So we said that it covers 39% are uncovered. So in order to do this, it has to be you are covering all venues in the Foursquare database. So this is what is actually in the Foursquare database. This is a complete list in the Foursquare database. Great. Ahmed? Yes. So actually, yeah, no, I, when I was referring, so the question is, is related to privacy and energy consumption. So in order to balance this too, what you can do is to do processing on the phone or a nearby laptop, for example. But when I was saying nearby laptop, it's your own laptop. So if you are working, maybe offload the data to your laptop, do the processing there, and then send the data over from your laptop. But you can think about some fancy stuff like uh, homomorphic encryption and doing data, but it is not mature to this. One thing here is that our focus mainly was quantifying the accuracy or the coverage of the four square social, uh, the location-based social networks, and then we can enhance the accuracy. Privacy and the energy, of course, is one main concern in order to have something that is running, and I think this is one of the main branches we need to focus on, too. Ali? Um, can you tell me on the stranger collection so was this organic in the sense that people were just going about their normal daily lives? Or was this uh, almost like a survey of like, they said, okay, today we're going to go visit all the stores, and you know, a week later we're going to visit and look at how we perform on the data from a week later. Can you walk me through your collection process? Was it 
Yes, sorry, I missed that. Sure. So I think the details, exactly, I'll say roughly from the top of my head, but the details are in the paper. So basically what we did is I think we uh, split the participant, 20 participants, into groups, and each group was asked to visit different venues at different times. So that we are covering different days of the week and different duration of the day, and they were requested to do uh, the chickens as they do naturally in their way, whether they did so or not. We are not sure, but uh, we hope that the mix, the different participants and the different splitting into different groups and covering different ways make it more realistic. Of course, the best thing if we could have uh, some data already. So what we get from chickens, it doesn't include the actual location as ground truth or so on. So if we can get some kind of this kind of information, we can do more realistic study, but this is what we could do through the resources we had. And the statistics together are plus This is combined. It's over the data we collected in all uh, locations. And that's maybe related to one of Robin's question is, maybe the fingerprints changes by the time of the day. So we didn't do this. We just collected it over the day, and we did our fingerprint. If we do that, maybe it can enhance the performance of different rankers, and the order of rankers may change uh, based on this. Yeah. So I, we just collected it as one one pool of data and we treated it. Yes, exactly, exactly. Or maybe we used cross validation. It is not on the top of my head, but I need to get back to the paper to make sure did we do this cross validation or just use the same the same data. But you'll find the details in the paper for sure. Right, but in, if you do that, may be one of the, for at least for the uh, semantic labeling thing, we did this. However, if you want to use the location and Wi-Fi, it has to be within the same mall. So, yeah, but at least for the semantic, we used a fingerprint in one mall and to compare it to uh, other malls. And that's how we got this 25% enhancement in coverage. Please. Yes. Exactly. That's actually a good question. I was my answer was going to be maybe this is the result of random, random selection. But uh, this is a valid point. Actually, maybe I need to double to look into it and see whether really if a random selection gives the same. Uh, but actually, if you say yes. Yes. Yes, it does. So actually, yes. So, good, good point. So you filter by location. This filter gives you 10 lists, and then you do a relative ranking within 10 lists. So actually, it's 10% it's without these 10 locations. But actually, maybe a lot like what Brian is saying, it's 10%. If you have 10 locations, it's random. You rank it. It's, 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 it's yes, exactly. So that's why it's uh, performed this uh, poorly. This one. Yes. So again, it's related to our unlock uh, uh, paper, and the way we do it is we do it in a crowdsourcing approach also. So what we do is that people who, during their normal operation, the phone is collecting data and sending it to our uh, servers. And what we do is you, through dead reckoning, you have an estimate of the user location. It is not accurate. So what we do is you reset this error through, it's a chicken egg problem, which you use anchors to enhance your location. And your location is used to estimate the anchor locations. So it fits actually the semantic, uh, the SLAM uh, problem. And this is our recent paper about enhancing unlock using the SLAM Technique, the semantic slam paper. Uh, maybe I shared it with uh, the group before. Yeah. Uh, please. Yes. So, what we have as an input is the floor plan of the area of interest without any labels. It is just the outlines of the borders of the different venues. And based 
uh, on this, we do this walking distance estimation and labeling, automatic labeling with some of the modules. We have another piece of work, which is the crowd inside paper, where we are automatically estimating the floor plan shape. So if you combine these two pieces of work, what you can do is you can get the floor plan, at least the borders of the rooms and the corridors, in a crowdsourcing approach also. So here our focus wasn't on the floor plan construction, it was on the location-based social network, but if you combine these two pieces together, you can do it in a completely automatic way. Of course, it will have an effect on the accuracy, but you need to balance uh, the two things. Uh, that's a good question, yeah. So, so even our crowd inside system, what we did is that we evaluated it in a small, uh, it was in our campus, it was a small building, you could get 100% accuracy if you have about 300 uh, traces from all users that uses the building. But however, we didn't test it in a large mall. If you do it in a large mall, usually the accuracy would be lower and it would be more uh, challenges, but I cannot give a number now from the top of my head, yeah. Lee? Um, Right. Um, but that, that also involves some really interesting possibilities around traditional logistical. Right? Like there are some situations where the Wi-Fi is ambiguous, but the location is sorry, the Wi-Fi is ambiguous and the image is very, very distinct. I don't know right. how much spectral is on this, right? Right versus right versus right. right. Um, what if like what, how much headroom do you think there is? How much better could you think you could do if you did more intelligent combination of these different things? So actually, we tried the score-based method, but our issue was there is the normalization between the different rankers. So the range of score here is different from the range of score here. Even if we did simple normalization, it didn't. The order-based technique was better in all cases we tried. But maybe if we try other techniques for uh, fusing these different scores together, maybe we can get. Yeah. So our intu intuition at the beginning is that if you use a score, it's more information. You get. You should get better results. But it didn't work out in the, at least the functions we tried, different functions we tried here. Maybe also the user feedback module can uh, help in this. So it can tell us that if we fix it uh, per venue or per user, it can tell us for this specific venue, mostly Wi-Fi is better than location. So if we take this particular profile-based uh, weighting, maybe you can also handle in uh, this particular point. Robin? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so actually, uh, it's a valid point, of course. It's our numbers. Of course, in our study, we are collecting all data because the participants were exactly students and their friends. But in reality, how would it, how would it work? This is a nice observation from the references we refer to. It's 79% of the time it's enabled. But it's a nice question. We are here at Google. So what percentage of All right, I think this is a very valid question, and I think maybe one of the figures here may provide a hint about it. So here, for example, it's, we are saying if you have location only as compared to if you have all the sensor information. So you can, this is better, still better than Foursquare without using any 
in their localization, but you have this extra 54%. So I think the trade-off you are talking about, if you move the more participation from the user, you are moving from this curve to this curve, maybe. So I think this is the green curve. So actually, the green curve is, is privacy concerns, which is without the mic and the images. Yes. So without it, you are losing. It's still better than location using the other sensors, but you are still not getting the full potential of the system. So of course, this is very interesting directions to look into here. Wow. And for a good cause, not a commercial, not a commercial. <laughs> Right, so uh, at least from the figures, at least for the user feedback module that we have this figure, we're talking about 30 chickens in order to stabilize the performance of the user feedback module. So I don't think it's much, and if you're talking about crowdsourcing sense, sensor data from millions or thousands or millions of users, you can get this quickly within a couple of days, if not a couple of hours. So uh, I think it shouldn't be much, but the question is, and that's why if Google have any uh, statistics that can share how much, uh, how many people, persons uh, share their data or don't care about it. I'm not sure if they can share it, this with us or not. <laughs> okay, but at least you have an idea of uh, what's going on there. Yeah. Overall, overall, this is for the user feedback module. The user feedback module. It's the weight, not, yeah, not. It's, Exactly, to get the actual rates of the over the entire mall or for the four different malls we used in our data. Yeah, I wonder if you take into account the number of users that use the mall and the percentage of them participating in your system, I think you can get quickly uh, saturate to the performance you are looking into. Yeah. Our question, great questions, all are great questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.